All right, welcome back to the loom and let's get this put together. So previous videos, we went through the process of um, warping the loom after creating a warp. You've been following along, I hope. If you have not, welcome. So at the stage we're at is where we want to attach the yarn to the front beam. Now there's a couple of ways that I've seen this done. And one of the ways is to tie each bundle onto the beam individually. And let me show you what I mean by that. This beam here. Um, I personally don't find that as intuitive and easy to get the tension right as the way I'm gonna show you. Everybody has their own most comfortable way of doing it, depending on how who taught them and how they were taught. And so um, if, what, if you've seen something else that works better for you, awesome. Now where we last left off, each one of these strands of eight was tied loosely so that we can undo them. So I'm going to undo one. It is now a set of eight. And I'm going to tie it off at the end permanent like. Okay, we all know that there's no true permanent like this. I can always undo it. However, I'm actually doing a full on knot at the end. Okay, I've knotted it, I've tightened it because I'm going to send a piece of yarn through this in the center and then around the beam through each one. And then I'm going to use that to tighten things. So let's get them all tied off at around the same length, around the same length, and then we will show you how I do the rest. Now we're knotted. Let's get this going. First thing I want to do is move my tea. Go away from the break. And we're going to release the break and I'm going to wind this up a little bit further because I needed to let it out. for slaying the reed, but I don't need quite that much distance now. There we go. That should do. Now I already have the, um, the cotton that I use attached to this and it's not knotted. Um, let me move my hand so you can possibly see this. It is just um, a half hitch, not even a half hitch. Anyway, you can take it off super easily if you need to. All right. So here's where we get this rolling. One, two, three, four, that's five. Let's have four. If you want to go up or down, that's up to you. There's no hard and fast rule on this. What we want to do is make sure that each one of these is attached to the beam. So, and around the beam. I 
I would suggest if you start by going under, finish by going under. <laughs> Don't go back and forth. I can't see that being a positive thing in the end. Now before I tighten anything up, I will be uh, tightening things up front and back as well with the braking system so that I have the most flexibility as I do that. I like to start off really loose with this because I have found where I have run out of um, the connecting thread, yarn, it's actually cotton. You probably guessed by now my terminology is not stellar, but that's okay, we're getting there. Seven. And there's eight. Okay. So let's tighten this back up. You'll notice how things are not as this is very loose. These are kind of tighter. We're going to work all that out. This is why I haven't tied it off yet. Because we need some more distance. I am just evening out the, the uh, so that the it's as loose as possible with each one. There. That's better. That's better. Okay. Now I'm going to tighten up on the back some. something I can work with you. You notice that because this one was longer I needed to give it a little more length. These ones, because they're shorter, gives me something to work with. So, space here that I can tighten that one up still. And I think we're ready. I'm 
I'm just doing a series of half hitches to secure this. And I watched somebody do this at one time and it was just, it was, it was mind blowing for somebody who deals in, you know, you deal in knots and stuff from when I was a crocheter to be able to balance out your tension super easily because it looks fairly balanced. It's not too bad, but I could feel some of them are a little looser than others. And what she did was she literally walked across like this <laughs> it was immediately balanced it that was one of those moments moments of clarity or wow moments as a weaver Sorry, i don't want my bar to overlap the uh, where it's actually going to go through so i need to push it through a little bit but not so far as to interrupt the braking system on this side okay so, now, if you'll notice, we are now all attached, it's nice and secure, it's not going anywhere, and we can now take out your leaf sticks. So let's do that. Just in case you can't see. I'm going to try and turn this over so slightly. There we go. things in life it really is now I have some scrap yarn that is chunky that I've used for I think every project I've ever made on both my rigid head of loom as well as this one and its purpose is to set the shed <sighs> I'm using a wrong term there um, make it so that what you're seeing here with the the separation it's going to bring all of this together and get a beautiful layout of the yarn so scrap it's nice and chunky and what we're going to do there it is okay when you put this in place it's always get some stuff out of the way here, which I forgot to do. There we go. Don't need that anymore. For the first little bit, you're going to do something called a tabby weave. And a tabby weave is one up, one down, one up, one down. It's a basic um, beginning weave. So because of the type of loom that I have, Mine has, and I'm going to try and just lift this up here. Mine has the, the, the heddles and the bracing system is all activated up here. So if I do one and three and two and four, that's going to give me a tabby weave. So watch what happens when I hit one and three together. Sorry about the noise, it's going to happen. Watch what happens to the shed. Okay, and just so that you can see what two and four is going to look like, I'm going to release the brake. There's two and four. Again, it's the opposite ones. So, back to one and three. And we're going to put through some of our waste. We're not going to take it super far. And the reasoning is because this will all 
be waste anyway and you want what's in front of it to be um, nice and even. I'm not beating until these are all put in place. I think it gives it extra strength would be the logic that I, I could come up with. Nobody so far that I have seen as a YouTuber and a weaver has explained the why for me. So if you know, I'd appreciate a comment down below. Okay. We'll start off with three and we're going to beat it and watch what happens to the, uh, to the yarn and how smooth it gets. So, Let's see here. I'm actually going to try and get you up into a better spot. You should be able to see that a little better. Yes, I hope. Okay, let's do that. Look at that. Isn't that lovely? It's nice and across, nice and even, and we should be able to, to throw some picks which is uh, our opening um, weft that we're going to be putting in. And that's also going to be in tabby because we want to make sure that we have a nice clean edge. I usually do 10 rows of the uh, tabby before I get into the pattern. So I'm, I'm really pleased with that. I don't think I need any more spacers. So let's... The yarn. So the other color we're using with this, that we talked about at the beginning, is the blue. And this is the diamond pattern. And one of the things I like to do for myself is I will put a sticky up here <laughs> um, with the pattern on it so I can easily see it. For now, what I want to do is we're going to get the tabby going. This is how I wind a shuttle. Lay it across. <clears throat> Wind it around ten times. And then, not on the on the beveled edge, but on the, the rounded edge, because there is a beveled edge and a, and a rounded edge, figure eight across the back. going but I want to get going you know what I'm saying I put things up top because they're easy easy to use so tabby like I mentioned it is one up one down and so I want to make sure those are locked in place I'm going to leave hanging off the edge three times the length, or sorry, the width of my piece because I'm going to finish the edge. Um, and I would rather have too much at the end than not enough. So there's one. There's two. There's three. So my first throw, I don't want to go past here. I will use more yarn. There we go. Okay. Couple of things. To get clean edges, bring it nice and not tight, but around. You want your yarn to lay at an angle so that as the fibers come together, when you beat it into place, it's going to take up more yarn because it not isn't going straight anymore. It's now, it's not going straight anymore, sorry. It's now going up and down with the yarns, right? So, or with the, uh, with the warp. So you want to give it that extra space to be able to do that. And there we go. Let's show you from the 
this angle and see if it's an easier thing to see. Okay, so I have it, oh, that's too tight, there we go. I have it just sort of tucked around the edge and it up on an angle and then you bead it in. Okay. Oh, that's going to feel lovely on his skin. Okay, awesome, 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 awesome. So now you can see, let me see if I can bring this over a little bit, get an idea of the tabby weave, just one up, one down. Um, and I'll come back here. There we go. Sorry about the, the jerks and stuff. Now we're going to and this may seem counterintuitive, but I need to be able to um, hem stitch, terminology, haha, um, this last row so that when we take it off the loom, it's not going to be um, falling apart before I get the, uh, the trimming done. So I like to take out my last row. And sometimes I'm smart and I, I uh, don't triple up this one. I leave them hanging down some. Today, not so much. It's okay. It's not going to hurt me. So I'm just going to remove one row. And that's so, I have, that's how I have sewing space. No other reason. But it's a pretty good reason, I think. I think I should be able to pull it from here now. Yep. See, now you can see I've got some space that I can now hem stitch. And this is where we need a big darning needle. And my skull has all of these things in it. Because if I leave little things like this out, if you can see it, there we go. Um, I have a cat. <laughs> I have a cat who likes to play with things, as you've seen from the fidget spinner uh, video. So, he's a two-year-old cat, and he's still playful, and I love it. There we go. All right, confession time. I question my sanity every time I do this. <laughs> Mainly because I always feel like I am hem stitching incorrectly. It always turns out fine, but Anyway, so I'm going to go in four because I want to keep this. I don't want it super dainty. This is for my husband. He's not a dainty guy. Um, you know, he takes good care of his stuff, but he's not dainty. So you don't want it dainty. So let's tie this off the end. Yoink. There we go. I'm going to come up to because I want to be sure that I'm gathering everything together. I 
again. Like I said, I'm never comfortable with this, so. As long as it's, as long as it's giving me the strength that I need, I'm kind of okay with it. And yeah, I've done research on it and for some reason, it's still not uh, not solidifying with me, so yeah, about that. So I'm going to get this done, and then we're going to grab the pattern. We're going to do some some weaving, which is just super cool, and that's the part that I've been really looking forward to, to make these diamonds go. <coughs> Excuse me. So, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to finish this part now, and we'll be back after I've made a mess. No. Um, when we have um, the pattern and we actually start the big weave. So, uh, see you then. Something I didn't mention, at the end of the row, when you finish doing your, um, your finishing stitch, whichever one you choose to use, there's no one that is um, absolute, so do whatever works for you. But when you get to the end, you've got all this yarn left over. You want to weave in the end right away. This way, it's it's done while it's under tension. And I'm just going to get this started and then I'll show you. I apologize for my arm being in the way. Just sometimes, getting it started. can be a bit of a challenge to try and show. And I'm just tabbying it back through, right? So, and I'm not going to go necessarily go all the way across, but you want it in far enough so that this is um, a little hardier than your average piece. I mean, if, if you're making something that's going to hang on the wall and you want to leave just, you know, it not being woven, the, the end's not being woven very far because it's not going to, endure any kind of hardship as a as a fabric then fine do you um but when i know this is going to get worn and i want it to be worn and i want it to be strong uh for my husband i'm going to weave it in at least a third of the way and that's what i've just done so once it's woven in you can snip the end Put your darning needle somewhere safe because they tend to get lost back in the skull <laughs> and there you go and now we are ready to continue weaving so the next thing i'm going to do though is i need to move the work area from up here to about here because that's where the beater ends on its furthest forward point. So we're going to, I have a break down here. Let me see if I can a little add up the tripod here. Da, 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 da. Whoa. Almost. There it is. Okay. Break. Take the break off. I'm going to wind this forward. Fine enough, put the brake back on, tighten so that we have good tension up here. I'm going to bring you back up again. There we go. And see what I'm up to. And now it's moved forward and when I 
bring the beater bar forward, it's resting on that last row. Okay, I'm going to tighten it. I think one more. I like a lot of tension in my weaving, not in my relationships. So for creating a pattern or utilizing some of the patterns that are that come preloaded with the iWeave LT, um, it, it it's really a great program. I've enjoyed playing with it and, and learning from it. Um, however, for actually weaving and having the pattern in front of you, having to pull out your iPad to check on things is a little bit cumbersome. So what I did last time and I found worked really well, now that we have all of this part already on the loom, that's done. It's this part and the lifting uh, lifts as to how we're going to create the pattern that I need to transcribe so that I'm not constantly having to look and see where am I and I can easily see things. So what I do is I create myself a little grid on a sticky note. So And you can be as uh, precise with the, the drawn lines as you like. Um, I'm not here for drawing class. So. That's irrelevant. That's irrelevant. So for the first ones, I want... And this goes one, two, three, four. I need this one and this one. And then I need this one and this one. And I didn't put my fourth row on. Nice. Well done, Karin. <laughs> and then I need this one and this one. And then I just need that one. I might redraw that because that's really, really rudimentary, like more than normal. And then we're going to go one, one, two, and three, and four, three, two, one, two, three, four. Four should be down here. Three, two, one. So what this means, and <laughs> It's so pretty, my drawing is amazing, is that for the first one, I'm going to back up here. Remember my, my switches, those things? Yes. We're going to lift one and two. Then we're going to lift two and three. Then we're going to lift three and four. And then we're just going to lift four. And then we're going to go to the third one. So then we're going to lift four and three, then three and two then two and one, and then we're gonna go back again. So we're gonna do this back and forth. Yes, you will find a groove. Yes, you will find your patterning. And, but every once in a while, you're going to need to be able to look back at the pattern in some form and confirm what you're doing. And so having this little extra note, I find helpful, but you have to work with what works for you. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna transcribe this again before I put it up. And uh, then we're gonna we're gonna make some diamonds. Be right back. I have my pattern set now, and it's up on the board, so I can see it easily. Yeah, that that's much neater than the uh, the little hen scratching that I was doing before. And now we're gonna make it happen. So for the first one, I need one and two. Yeah, remember up here, one and two. lift one and two and you'll see the different ones raise up okay. put that one through now here's something I'm just noting is that as I put my first one through I'm going to end up leaving this hanging and this is going to be left kind of out there. And I'm really not a fan of that. And they talk about things called like a floating salvage. 
and I'm still a new weaver. I've tried to work with a floating salvage. Not exactly sure how that works. So what we're going to do is we're just going to make sure that we tuck this last one in so that your yarn, your weft, goes around that outer piece, the outer um, warp yarn. This way it catches on either side every time. Okay, you do what you got to do to make that work. So there's one, two, two, three. We're going to come back the other direction. And again, it's not going to capture this one, so I'm going to make sure that it does. And what Reese is wonderfully working in the kitchen because he is awesome. Three, three, four down. And is that one going to be captured? Yes, if I come up underneath it. There we go. Try not to beat so hard that you overlap your yarns. There we go. And the last one is just four. And that one needs to come up underneath this last one for sure. So that is looking at the pattern. Let me bring you back up so you can see. There's the pattern. Okay, so that was one, two, three, four. And then we're gonna go in the other direction, three, two, one. So the three is actually in alignment with the four, three combination. So we're gonna take those two down. I'm going to make sure that edge is captured. There we go. Three, two. One. Okay, so if you look, we now have a full set, there we go, of the pattern, and we have diamonds forming here, and we're seeing if you we have to look really carefully so far in the beginning, but we're starting to see this wave pattern uh, coming along here. And I'm slightly out of frame, so I apologize. Um, the wave pattern coming along like this. And we've got the diamonds happening here. We'll be able to see this more as we continue on. So we've gone one, two, three, four, three, two, one. So we're now we're gonna go back into the two position. Make sure we capture this outside one, which is that one. Four, three, let's go under. Want to see the diamonds, honey? Nice. So I'll be starting. And then four. Capture that outside one. And it'll be a constant thought process all the way along, making sure you capture that last one, making sure that you're 
yarn is your weft is not pulling in too much so you don't end up with a ball keeping things nice and flat okay so I'm gonna get a bunch more done and uh, then I will come back and we'll talk about it a little bit more um, so you can actually see the patterning a little bit more and from there because from the camera I'm a little t I'm a little too close to see it as as you're probably guessing when you back it up you can see it a little bit better and you can see it in the camera so um, I'm gonna get a bunch of this done and I'll be back to give you a good picture of what I'm seeing and I really like this and this yarn that I've been putting in as the weft is so soft it counterbalances the strength of the warp um, but it's a different type of soft it's really lovely I think Reese is going to enjoy this scarf